There are things which seem incredible to most men who have not studied mathematics. Man has always learned from the past. After all, you can't learn history in reverse. Those who claim to discover everything but produce no proofs of the same may be confuted as having actually pretended to discover the impossible. Rise above oneself and grasp the world. Many people believe that the grains of sand are infinite in multitude. Others think that although their number is not without limit, no number can ever be named which will be greater than the number of grains of sand. Equal weights at equal distances are in equilibrium, and equal weights at unequal distances are not in equilibrium but inclined towards the weight which is at the greater distance. Give me a place to stand, and a lever long enough, and I will move the world. Any solid lighter than a fluid will, if placed in the fluid, be so far immersed that the weight of the solid will be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. The perimeter of the earth is about three million stadia and not greater. Two magnitudes whether commensurable or incommensurable, balance at distance is reciprocally proportional to the magnitudes. The diameter of the earth is greater than the diameter of the moon, and the diameter of the sun is greater than the diameter of the earth. Mathematics reveals its secrets only to those who approach it with pure love, for its own beauty. I am persuaded that this method, for calculating the volume of a sphere, will be of no little service to mathematics. For I foresee that once it is understood and established, it will be used to discover other theorems which have not yet occurred to me, by other mathematicians, now living or yet unborn. The center of gravity of any parallelogram lies on the straight line joining the middle points of opposite sides. The center of gravity of any cylinder is the point of bisection of the axis. How many theorems in geometry which have seemed, at first impracticable are in time successfully worked out. Don't disturb my circles. Fellow, stand away from my diagram. Having been the discoverer of many splendid things, he is said to have asked his friends and relations that, after his death, they should place on his tomb a cylinder enclosing a sphere, writing on it the proportion of the containing solid to that which is contained. He who knows how to speak, knows also when. It follows at once from the last proposition that the center of gravity of any triangle is at the intersection of the lines drawn from any two angles to the middle points of the opposite sides respectively. He was as much enchanted by the rudiments of algebra as he would have been if I had given him an engine worked by steam. Every day he made the discovery of something which seemed to him exquisitely beautiful. The new toy was inexhaustible in its potentialities. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. If thou art devil, O stranger, to find out all these things and gather them together in your mind, Giving all the relations, thou shalt depart crowned with glory and knowing that thou hast been adjudged perfect in this species of wisdom. 
Archimedes will be remembered when Aeschylus is forgotten, because languages die and mathematical ideals do not. Immortality may be a silly word, but probably a mathematician has the best chance of whatever it may mean. Certain things first became clear to me by a mechanical method, although they had to be demonstrated by geometry afterwards because their investigation by the said method did not furnish an actual demonstration. But it is of course easier to supply the proof than it is to find it without any previous knowledge. We have all heard of the puzzle given to our Archimedes. His finding that the crown was of gold was a discovery, but he invented the method of determining the density of solids. Indeed, discoverers must generally be inventors, though inventors are not necessarily discoverers. Once a mathematical result is proven to the satisfaction of the discipline, it doesn't need to be re-evaluated in the light of new evidence or refuted, unless it contains a mistake. If it was true for Archimedes, then it is true today. There is an astonishing imagination, even in the science of mathematics, we repeat, there was far more imagination in the head of Archimedes than in that of Homer. Archimedes, who combined a genius for mathematics with a physical insight, must rank with Newton, who lived nearly 2,000 years later, as one of the founders of mathematical physics. Who would not rather have the fame of Archimedes, than that of his conqueror Marcellus. To what heights would science now be raised if Archimedes had made the discovery of decimal number notation? Archimedes said Eureka, cause in English he weren't too averse in, when he discovered that the volume of a body in the bath is equal to the stuff it is immersed in. That is the law of displacement. That's why ships don't sink. It's a shame he weren't around in 1912. The Titanic would have made him think. It is to be feared that few who are not experts in the history of mathematics have any acquaintance with the details of the original discoveries and mathematics of the greatest mathematician of antiquity, perhaps the greatest mathematical genius that the world has ever seen.